Have you ever marvelled at the combat prowess of the monks of old, wielding their bow staffs with deadly accuracy? Or have you ever wanted to knock arrows out of the air as they fly towards you, or reduce your heart rate down to a bare minimum, or and even see in the dark? Well, in this video, we are going to have a look at the School of Magic, which provides your character with all of these skills. Welcome to the world of the mystics. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. So welcome back to the next video focusing on the magic system of Mithras. I've already told you about folk magic, the miracles of the theists and the raw power of the sorceress. So if you have missed any of these videos, then please do look back or find the links in the comments below. Now I have had a lot of requests to talk about animus and believe me, I am not putting it off at all honestly but they will be coming probably in the next video so do consider pressing that bell button so you get a notification when my next video is uploaded so what is mysticism all about well let's get down to basics and see how the mystic works and listen and remember to listen in on the december's episode of the mithras matters podcast to hear how I incorporate mystics into my campaign. Despite mysticism being a school of magic, it is not about casting spells. Instead, they, according to page 154 of the core rulebook, learn to channel their energies into enhancing their personal capabilities, sometimes far outstripping those of their fellows outstripping through a combination of meditative techniques and applied knowledge mystics can increase their likelihood of success with skills invoke seamlessly seemingly super supernatural powers and develop incredible reactions to direct threats and or hostile situations Mystics have two skills which they invest points into, meditation and mysticism. Now, meditation starts off as the total of the character's intelligence and constitution. It is the ability to reach a state of concentration by removing all distractions. This dictates how many powers or talents the mystic can have up and running at any one point. Once the skill has been calculated, one tenth of it is the total intensity which the character can maintain in talents. So for example, if a character had a meditation skill of 57%, the character can maintain active talents up to an intensity of six. Why six? Well, one tenth of 57 is 5.7 and that rounds up. Now, the skill of mysticism is calculated by adding the character's power and constitution together. It is the knowledge they have concerning the secret techniques and abilities taught in a particular path of mystic enlightenment. More about paths later on in the video. It not only controls the maximum intensity at which any particular talent can be implemented, but it is also the skill that the mystic rolls in order to ensure that the talent takes place. The maximum intensity of a uh, a talent that the mystic can use is limited to one twentieth of the character's mystic skill. Um, so if the mysticism skill is 56, then the mystic can only use talents up to an intensity of three because one twentieth of 56 will round up to three. Now, there's an important difference between meditation and mysticism. Remember that meditation allows for the maximum intensity of talents that the mystic can have active, 
Well, mysticism is the maximum intensity of each individual talent. So with the examples of our skills that I've mentioned before, our mystic could use two talents at intensity three and maintain them at the same time. And this is because three is the maximum level of intensity that they can cast or maintain. And they can have two of these up since they have a maximum of six intensity um, that they can keep talents going at the same time. Uh, this is a careful balance and it's worth getting your budding mystics to understand this so they don't fumble over it in gameplay. So with those two skills sorted out, let's find out how many talents the mystic has. So all mystics start off with the number of talents equal to 20, 1 20th of their mysticism skill. After this, talents can be learned through the normal way, i.e. use of experience points. However, there is some restrictions um, because of the path that the mystic follows. I'm talking about paths a lot, but there will be some more information about that later on in the video. Before we get into talking about talents the mystic can use, please consider liking, comment and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions, personal blogs and videos about GMing. So why not subscribe, press that bell button to get a notification when my next video goes live. Also, if you would like to provide some additional support, if you know what I mean, then the link to my Patreon account is down below as well. I really appreciate all the support that people provide. And you can read more about how I view supporting my um, antics either here or on Twitch in a blog post that I wrote a while ago in the description. Okay, back to mystics and their talents. Right, so talents for the mystics come under three generic categories, augmenting a skill, invoking a talent and enhancing an attribute. So augmenting a skill allows the mystic to use their intensity to alter the difficult difficulty of the skill role. So the difficulty grade cannot go lower than very easy, but it can be used to mitigate situation modifiers. For each point of intensity that the mystic uses, the skill difficulty is reduced by one grade. And in order to power this, um, each point of intensity that removes the difficulty down by one grade needs or requires the expenditure of one magic point. Invoking a trait costs two magic points and all these um, talents have a, a default intensity of one. Traits the mystic can use range from the infamous arrow cutting through to astral projection. They can sense anything from magic to life and gain the power of night sight and even slow their heart rate down. Finally, mystics can use the talent called enhance attributes. This can be anything from action points to healing rate and even their initiative and damage modifier. Enhancing an attribute costs three magic points per step and each step is seen as an intensity. So moving the mystic's damage modifier up up by two steps would cause cost six magic points and be an intensity of two for maintaining. Remember, going back to the beginning of the vid video, these intensities are really important. They are not only what um, the maximum that a mystic can use, but also the maximum of how much intensity of traits or talents they can actually maintain. Mystics can be very powerful, but the cost on their magic pool can be huge. A good mystic is creative and uses his talents wisely and for a purpose. Okay, so whenever a mystic wants to activate a talent, they have to meet certain criteria. First, 
they must know the talent. Second, they must have enough magic points to power it. And third, they must make a successful mysticism roll. Now, it takes just one turn to implement a talent per intensity of that talent. Now, during the time, the mystic is unable to do anything but meditate and focus on that talent. On the final turn of preparation, the mystic then makes the mysticism roll to see whether or not the talent comes into existence. Now, I've mentioned several times in this video um, the idea of paths and the talents which are actually available to the mystic to use is limited by the path that they follow. At creation, mystics need to join and follow a specific path. Um, this path provides the teaching and the talents for the mystic and will determine which talents are available for them at character creation and also as they progress. You can find some suggestions for paths in the core rule book on page 211, but they operate very much like cults and brotherhoods. For example, in those on that page 211, you can find the path of deceit, the fellowship of the snake. This has the ability to augment cons the skills of conceal, deceit, influence, slight and willpower. They are allowed to invoke night sight and enhance movements. Well, a mystic following the path of the shadows can augment perception and stealth and unarmed combat and even a ranged combat style. They can invoke adhesion, which allows them to stick to walls, night sight and yet again enhance movement. So there's a range of paths that the mystic can follow and you really need to decide as a player and a GM what sort of feel the paths or the mystics will play in your campaigns. Now don't forget if you tune into December's issue of Mithras Matters, the podcast focusing all on Mithras, on the Mithras rule set and its supplements, you can hear how I incorporate mystics into my own campaign. The links to the podcast are down below. I hope this has provided you with some tantalizing talents of the mystics. Um, when you fancy a change, maybe grab that meditation mat and start to follow a suitable path which matches your playing style. If you have any questions about the mystics or any other question about the Mithras rule set, then I will do my best to answer them. Um, so just pop them in the comments below. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasing everyone. See ya. Bye.